am Mark and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. All right, now today what we're going to talk about are the Republican Party, um, specifically Marjorie Taylor Greene. Uh, we might touch on some of the other ones. Off the top of my head, I can think of Jim Jordan, who's been making a fool of himself lately. And Mike Johnson, he's so religious, supposedly, but then is so ready to fall in line with Donald Trump. And what does that tell you about these folks who just claim religion as a, some sort of a protective cloak? and then um, just stick their arm out to do anything ugly that they want to. So that's what we're gonna be talking about. MTG, uh, Jim Jordan, and Mike Johnson. So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, why haven't you subscribed? And thank you very much for watching. So I guess the idea is that uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Jim Jordan, and Mike Johnson have just gone off the rails. Um, so willing, to lie and I think it's because of the money. I think the money that Trump is drawing in, he completely controls the Republican Party's coffers now with his daughter-in-law, uh, Laura Trump, uh, handling the money. And uh, so I think they all feel like if they don't, if they suck up to Trump, they're not gonna get any money for whatever it is they wanna do and they're willing to sell their morals if they had any to begin with for that. I mean, it all goes down to Marco Rubio. Of course, it was always Ted Cruz. There's just a whole laundry list. Some of them I'm really disappointed in. Marco Rubio, I um, never expected that he would go this way. But there we are. But uh, So the definite three, MTG, Jim Jordan, Mike Johnson, and maybe Marco Rubio. We'll see how it goes. It'll be off the cuff. So here we go. Um, I thought I'd use this Rackham Tarot. It's an interesting deck. It's kind of uh, dark and mysterious. And I thought that... Uh, Maybe that is a good choice for this. Now, I'll tell you how I actually choose the, the decks I'm going to use. You can see they're all behind me uh, here. And uh, and all I do is, once I've decided um, generally what I'm going to read on. So generally it would be, I'd say, well, I'll read on the Republican Party. I'll read on the Democrats. Or I'll read on this person, Trump. Or I'll read on, you know, I, I, I'll get a general idea in my head. And then I'll spin around and pretty much just pick some cards almost at random. Maybe sometimes with a little more thought. But I just trust uh, the universe. Oh, these cards are all twisted around. Okay, you're going to be with me while I fix these cards because I don't think I can deal with them uh, inverted. So let's go through them one at a time. And this will give you a chance to look at them, I guess, and make sure they're not inverted. Inverted cards are not something I like to use. And if they come up that way, it's gonna, just going to... Uh, cause a problem with the reading. So be patient with me. Maybe you like to hear me just rattling off uh, talking to myself. And uh, if you do, that's good. I believe perhaps some of, uh, something that would help me get more viewership is if I had more of a personal relationship with all of you, uh, which requires, of course, time. Now, what is this? This is the, yeah. Um, and right now, uh, because of so much changes, so many changes going on in my personal life, I don't have time to establish a very personal uh, relationship with you guys, and I'm sorry. But I will, because I've been doing this for several years now. I've got about 750 videos up there. Some of them are not very good quality uh, because I've experimented with different formats uh, along the way. It's probably interesting if you go back and look at some of my first videos. And as a matter of fact, my very first one is uh, interesting because it's just so full of self-doubt. But, um, and it's all they're boring. I used to do a little bit of studying on the subjects before I would um, do a video. I used to read like a little bit of background upon the person that was gonna be um, uh, doing a reading on. So look back at those and maybe you'll like them. Um, I honestly, once I make a video, because what happens is I'll record the thing, I'll piece it together, and I'll review it to, uh, after I've got it pieced together to see if the sound is right, if the picture's coming through, and uh, so that I know that once it gets uploaded, you're going to see what I expect you to see and not some half-done video with, with uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know how anybody does it differently. But once I watch it back, and I'll probably watch, have watched a video back 
maximum three times uh, before it gets published. Once it's published, I do watch it kind of quickly. I'll skip ahead uh, through the reading actually, but just to make sure it's all the transitions are going properly. Sometimes it's just too late and if there's a, a mistake or what I feel is a mistake, I don't have time to change it. Oh man, I just put it up there like that. I'm sorry. But again, once everything gets settled down in my life, over here, it'll be a little bit of a different story. So we're going to talk about uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene. We're going to talk about Jim Jordan. And then we're going to talk about uh, Mike Johnson. And if, I, if it looks like I can throw somebody else in there, I will. But before we do any of that, let's have just a moment, because this helps me out, of meditation. So let's see how this goes. For those of you who've been with me for a while, you'll know that I had uh, some surgery done on my eyes a year or so ago. Maybe a little bit longer than that now. And a surgery done on one eye, this one, and um, and other things. What I have is glaucoma, which if you just do a Google search, you see it's not a curable thing. And once you've lost vision, whatever you've lost, whatever amount of vision you've lost remains lost. And for me, it amounts to, like if you look at a screen that's pixelated and some of the pixels are missing around the edges of the vision of this eye. So when I close it like this, I don't see much outside of there. It's very blurry and, um, and some things are gone completely. But this eye, the my left eye, is the one that really does most of the work uh, for me. So uh, I just wanna say if any of you are thinking about having eye surgery, uh, cataract surgery, which I've also had done. Don't worry about it. Do it. Okay. Don't be scared of it. Just get it done. Uh, if you've got health uh, options available to you, you should always use them. But right now, let's get to Marjorie Taylor Greene. Marjorie Taylor Greene. So the insane thing. I saw uh, something on television where she was accusing uh, Dr. Fauci. Remember, he was a fellow who really. Um, was one of the ones at the forefront of getting us through COVID and he dedicated his whole life to that. He's been working for the federal government for most of his career and uh, and accusing him that he should be in jail, he should be a prisoner. And I'm gonna tell you, if these people get in power, that's what's gonna happen. Good, innocent, honest people. Think of Navalny in Russia, who was trying to um, expose who Putin really is and he just put him in jail. And uh, in Russia, people fall out of windows unexpectedly. Literally, they do. If you're not watching the news about this stuff, you should. And not Fox, please. But, um, but that's what we'll end up with if we have another Trump president, or God forbid, somebody like him who's smarter than him. So uh, let's do MTG. Let me clear these cards up a bit. Marjorie Taylor Greene. What can the cards, just three cards, just to get us in the groove of, of kind of her energy. Margie Taylor Green. What's the deal with this horrible woman? Good God. And I've had people recently in my life who are like clones of her. Okay, so this is Margie Taylor Green. And what we have here is the king of wands. Wands are actions, plans, forward movement. King of wands is all the energy that the, that, that suit has available to it. And you can see that this King of Wands is riding on the backs of this wily fox. Okay. What's significant here is that the fox is small. So this king is holding on to his plans, his actions, his forward movement. And he's, um, he's, he's rushing ahead. He's at the mercy of how this little fox carries him along. And he's so precariously balanced up there. It looks like he could fall off any minute. So this is Marjorie Taylor Greene. Wily fox really king of her, her actions, her plans, her forward movement. Whatever it takes, she's going to stay on the back of that fox, which I guess is probably Trump. The next one up here is the Four of Pentacles. Now, what's interesting about the Four of Pentacles, Pentacles are, are usually value or power or money. And in this case, I'm going to say it's probably all of those things. 
And um, so, sh and the four pentacles denotes wanting to hold on to that value or that power or that money. And so, at the center of her little uh, get to know you read that I'm starting out with is, you know, desperate to hold on to that uh, th that value. And my head is itchy. And then the last thing up here is is ten up to thirty is death. Oh wow! So that's interesting. Death isn't usually death but it is a definite end of a cycle okay so what do we have here is a get to know Marjorie Taylor Greene Wiley she is the king she has a lot of uh, power for her actions and her plans are for a movement and she's riding on the back of that that precarious little Wiley Fox just balanced on there she's trying desperately to hold on to her power and uh, but there's a new cycle in her future which is the uh, you know it's the, the end of this cycle is in her future and usually that means something else starts after that. So that gives us an idea of who she is. Is, does she believe the things that she espouses uh, to the public? Does she believe that stuff in her heart? Or is it just, is it just her um, being a horrible person, you know, trying to hold on to the power and, and get whatever money she can from the dupes who support her. Uh, let's do six cards. And six. So six cards to really delve into MTG and uh, does she believe in these things that she's espousing? It's just a convenient thing to say. Well the Four of Swords is, um, oh I forgot what the Four of Swords is. So the Three of Swords is is a um, let's look at it quickly. The uh, three of swords is a broken heart. Four of swords. This is right here. Swords, pentacles, uh, and you know I don't mind looking this stuff up. I don't have a good memory. Rejuvenation, sleep, meditation, contemplation. Oh, four of swords is very interesting because what it denotes is that you really have to be careful before you make a movement. Okay, it's of course like we say, tr swords are truth, justice, rules, and law, and she is. Very being very contemplative, very careful about how she's going to move forward. That's the center, that's the signifier of her readings, that this is who she has to be. She has to be playing very carefully uh, to not get stuck by those swords. But the challenge to it, what's the challenge to that? Well, it's more truth, justice, rules, and law, but it's the five of swords. And wow, what's wrong with my brain today? And the five, I'll just keep my, uh, my cheat uh, list out here. The Five of Swords, uh, wow, that's interesting. Cruelty, selfishness. So the Five of Swords, <coughs> what's challenging her being so contemplative about, about her, her, what she's going to espouse is the greed that's involved with it. Okay, so it's hard to project something that you think other is, that others will believe is going to be uh, protecting them when you really have an ulterior motive in mind. The basis of this whole thing is this King of Cups. Of course, it's the emotion. Uh, cups are uh, emotions, heartfelt situations, the King of Cups. So the basis of everything that she's about is drumming up this emotion. It's keeping all this emotion uh, close and, and stirred up. So that's the basis of who she is. In the past for her, though, is this, uh, ten, is this 14... This is a an emotional kind of a temperance, okay? That is gone in this major arcana. Anything that she had that was tethering her to some sort of balance is gone. In the sky of this is this princess of wands. So we she started out uh, in that other reading as a king of wands, but the most she can aspire to is being a, a queen. Of wands, the the Queen of Wands again is someone uh, wanting uh, to forward their actions, plans, forward movement, having people kiss their ring. Um, so she still has a considerable amount of, of, of uh, a considerable way to go, uh, which is sad for us to hear. So she has um, she's got more staying power. The likely outcome for her in this dyadic cross is the ah the magician this is very interesting oh no this is the one of the um, one of wands 
to the Ace of Wands. Well, this is having a great big uh, store or, or something available to you of more actions, plans, forward movement. She's got a ways to go. The first draw showed us that, you know, the end will come, but this is telling us that her ride is going to last a little bit longer. Let's do four more cards just to see if they can tell us a little bit more about this. How will she be in the public view as far as uh, government for a long time? Let's see what is the signifier of that question. Okay. And that's the, the Five of Wands. And the Five of Wands is pointless arguing. So we see this person chased up a tree by a bunch of wolves. And uh, the fact is, is that the arguing the uh, is pointless because these wolves are not going to give up until they drag this person out of the tree. The uh, environment that that's in, however, is this Knight of Cups. So this knight is a compassionate knight who's uh, who the knight will fight for what he's been given to fight for for his remit and so so this compassion is standing there waiting for the, you see the little fish right there that's her popping her head up this knight <coughs> is standing there waiting for every opportunity to deal with that little fish so that's the environment that her her pointless uh arguing is in a little drink of water here The hopes and the fears <coughs> for her. Six of Wands. So <coughs> my brain is just uh, gone today. Six of Wands is success, is victory. Wow. It's the hopes and the fears. So her hope is that she will be successful and her fears is that she won't. <coughs> Sorry I get so coffee when I start doing these videos. And then the likely outcome is the lover's card. This is Major Arcana. She's going to find a partnership somehow. I think she's going to be with us for a while. That woman is going to be with us for a while. What that indicates to me is that there's a huge body of people out there who are really liking the energy that this woman uh, espouses. Well, I'm sorry to tell you. She's not going anywhere anytime soon, but when she does, there'll be a, a change. That um, first little three card draw, where she had the death card, it could mean that she's out of Congress and she's into some other kind of more local public office. That's interesting. Let's do another three little card to see if she will eventually be in some sort of very local uh, politics. I can see that happening with her. Margie Taylor Green, local politics, is that what's in her future? Margie Taylor Green, local politics, is that what's in her future? Do one at a time. 10, 15, 16 is, um, I can't think of a thing today. So the uh, 16, I have to count them. 1, 2, 3, oh, over here so you can see them. Uh, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. It's, oh, that's interesting. That can't be the talent card, can it? Let's look it up. Because each, each deck, the definition can be slightly different for each one. 10, 15, 16. Yeah, it's the tower card, right? So, there's a disaster in her future. One more, maybe two more. The Queen of Cups. Okay, this Queen of Cups is mourning. So her heartfelt situation are causing her grief. And then the uh, Queen of Pentacles. I think, yeah, I think what's gonna happen here is her bigger political, political career is gonna crash. She's gonna mourn that, but her value is still gonna uh, remain because here she is as a queen of uh, coins so this is telling you that probably she's going to be uh, involved in something locally but let's do one more card and uh, so this is the knight of yeah she will fight for that she will fight to stay on the public payroll in some way if not uh, uh, United States in some local situation scary so if you don't like her kind of energy don't be moving to her section of Georgia 
uh, because uh, you are going to be dealing with all those people who love what she represents. So now we're going to move on to Jim Jordan. Now Jim Jordan is an interesting uh, subject to me because you know he was a coach, a, a high school uh, coach, and his whole um, his claim to fame in that, or, or, or his stain in that, was that there was another coach, I believe it was, it was a coach, who was abusing uh, the boys. He knew. He didn't say anything about it. He hid it, as a matter of fact. He said he didn't know anything about it when he, in fact, did. So Jim Jordan, similar for him, you know, is he, he's really got a grip on that uh, national position that he has. So let's get a feel for Jim Jordan, which is three cards to get us started here. Jim Jordan. What can the cards tell us about him? Okay, so this is the Knight of um, Wands, Actions, Plans, Forward Movement. His first card out is that he's a fighter for his Actions, Plans, and Forward Movement. If they were good, that'd be a good thing. The, oh my goodness. So this is uh, 10, 11, 12. So this is the uh, 12 of the Major Arcana. And this is, um, you know, walking a tightrope, quite literally just what you see here, you know, really um, trying to f find some careful way to, uh, and, and look beneath this tightrope, you would think it's a safety net, but look, it's a spider's web. I don't know if you can see it. So this is him. This is what he's doing. This is what his life is. He's always walking that tightrope with the danger of falling into a death trap. And then the final thing for Jim Jordan is this uh, 19, which is the, is that the star card, the 19? Um, yeah, that is the star card. Uh, I don't want to say it's a star card. I think it might be the sun. So let's see if we can uh, get that out a little bit better. Uh, 10, 19. I'm glad you guys are being patient with me. Yeah, it's the sun. It's an interesting way to depict the sun. So the sun is, is like a star. I mean, the light is going to shine down on him in the end. Let's read it carefully again. So Jim Jordan, just to get to know you kind of spread here, is that he's a fighter for his actions, plans, and his forward movement. That's that's who he who he is. Okay, um, he's walking a tightrope with the danger of falling into what he thinks is a safety net, but is a death trap. And the, and what you know, when something falls into the spider's web, they don't get out. And then the final thing is the sun is going to shine down on him. Well, that's what we've got for him. He's never going to give up. He thinks he's going to uh, walk this tightrope. And this person is kind of making a good play of it. But um, they're going to be revealed. Okay, with, with that sun card being the last one up there. So now let's do six uh, cards for Jim Jordan. I'm not going to be shy about using the references for these cards because I don't use them often. And they're not a clear, um, it's not clear what they mean in the Rider Waite deck if you haven't used them regularly. Maybe I should use them a little more often. But Jim Jordan, what can six cards tell us about this guy? One, two, three, four, five, and six. Jim Jordan, give us a story. Story. Tell us, give us a peek. Signify a card for Jim Jordan. Ah, look at this. So this is the privileged person. The Nine of Pentacles, value. This is the person that has everything they need. Many of these politicians, this is the best paying job they've ever had and will ever have. Remember, besides whatever salary they're making, uh, which when they start out can be $180,000 maybe a little bit less but by the time they've been there for a long time they're making a decent money and they've got all of their staff paid for their offices are paid for they're drawing in money from um, the public to pay for their campaigns <coughs> so the signifier card in this is that <coughs> he is a privileged person I should uh, choose some gum for these things the challenge to it 
is the 14 card, which is temperance. The challenge to that is finding that balance. The basis of this <coughs> is the Two of Pentacles also finding a balance. So his, his whole life is a balance. The fool in the past. So his new journey has had started and that there's no more new beginnings for him. He's in the final stretches. <coughs> I apologize. And the sky of this is the Knight of Wands. But we see this fighter for their for their plans seems to be almost buried in their flames. He's gonna fight to the finish. He will never give up, he will never tell the truth. And then the final outcome for this is this Five of Swords, which is, um, like we said, Five of Swords, cruelty, selfishness, yeah. He doesn't have a good end. This is cruelty, selfishness, uh, regarding truth, justice, rules, and law. So, Jim Jordan, privileged person, for some reason, he's got this privileged position. Maybe it's so that we can learn lessons from him. His challenge to that is this temperance, or balance, really. And then underscore the whole thing is just on a lesser scale that uh, playing uh, with the, that value. And you can see these little persons here, and this is him like a Pied Piper, just having all these little people following around. And the past of this, with this full card, his journey began. Uh, already that's in the past he's not starting over again and in the sky the best he can hope for is that this night is going to go down in flames and then the final outcome here is this five of swords which is just a cruel uh, end one can only hope I hate to wish bad things on people but you know our, our souls kind of choose the, um, the the path they're going to take and so there's some lessons here that had to uh, be played out for this guy's soul. He can come back again if that sort of thing actually happens. As some sort of a Mother Teresa, who knows? Mike Johnson. This one is so interesting to me because this guy will tell you that he's all about l the literal Bible. Okay? All about, you know, walking in Jesus' footsteps. And then we see him standing behind the devil. Three cards for uh, Mike Jordan. One, two, three. What strikes me about these Republican uh, people in public office is they're beautiful. They're well-groomed. They're attractive-looking looking people. They can make their thoughts uh, um, uh, radiate out. But it's just the sort of thing that their gullible followers want to have. Okay, so oh, the same thing with Mike Johnson. Privileged person. So this Six of Swords is moving out of troubled water. So that's interesting. I'll tell you what I think this is in just a second. But that's moving out of troubled water. Truth, justice, rules, and law. And then the final one here is the Queen of Pentacle hanging on to his value. Okay, so he saw himself, or maybe he is, what is supposed to help bring that Republican Party back to some sort of a uh, normalcy. But he realizes he can't do that if he doesn't remain at the top of his game as far as value is concerned, the Queen of Pentacles. So he's willing to look back to some of these, uh, let me go uh, kiss Trump's ring. Let me say that uh, Biden is a bad person. Let me uh, denounce uh, Dr. Fauci if in fact he's done that. So this is who he is. He's a privileged person for whatever reason. He does see himself as bringing the Republican Party out of troubled water, but he's willing to to do anything almost to to hold on to some value now let's do six cards for mike johnson just see what we get for him mike johnson's journey what can you tell us about mike johnson's journey i don't remember what city or what state uh, he's originally from who his constituents are but mike johnson what can the cards tell us about his journey One, two, three, four, five. Mike Johnson's journey. What can the cards tell us about his journey? What happens with my coughing? I have to just tell you about it. So I go a large part of my day without speaking to anyone. 
honestly. A few words here, a few words there. And I don't talk so much until I sit down to do these videos. So I come to this without having exercised my voice. And, um, and so that's why you'll see me so many times coughing like crazy on these videos because I just don't stand up and talk. If you would ever try to stand up in front of a crowd and give a little speech or a little lecture, um, you'll realize that if you don't prepare yourself ahead of time, I think this is what I have to do. And this is what you'll have. Uh, Mike Johnson, signifier card. Six of Pentacles. This is... <coughs> Why can't I remember my... Um, today. The Six of Pentacles is doling out the... Oh. <coughs> okay. In his position specifically, the value, he controls that value. And he needs to dole it out to those other members appropriately. So that's where he is at his core. Really in charge. The challenge to that, again, is the Sun card. The challenge to that is that he is exposed. He's, he's shining brightly in the Sun. People see what he's really doing. The basis of this being this Nine of um, Wands is really being embattled. Can you see this card? This is a very eerie card. The trees have come to life. And a lot of issues in that for him. The past for Mike Johnson, with this four of the major arcana, is the, so this is the emperor. The past of this is being the emperor. So this valuable position that he's in now is, is in his past. It's not potent as it was in the beginning. The ten of uh, swords is um, just a nightmare. Okay, he's being slayed, um, and the best he can hope for. This I don't feel like this is him slaying the dragon. I think that's him being slayed. And the likely outcome then, with this seven of cups, is illusion and delusion. Illusion and delusion. That's a very interesting. So he's going to progress to this perfection of illusion and delusion. We're going to be, he's going to be hanging around for a while. If not in, the, in his current position, just in general, we're going to see more of Mike Johnson. He might turn out to be one of their presidential candidates eventually. And um, I want to do on the whole Republican Party, all these MAGA Republican politicians, three cards to let us know are they ever going to become less uh, powerful? Three cards for the MAGA politicians. Is their power ever going to significantly wane? That's what I want to know. You should want to know too. Okay, so we have the 11 of the Major Arcana. This is Judgment. Look at this. This is the little person here has finally come to judgment. The Two of Cups is finding a perfect partnership emotionally. And the last card with this Seven of Coins is wondering if you've done enough. Will these MAGA politicians be around with us for a while? Well, they will have a time when they're come to judgment. Okay? They will find some partnership. The school of fish going by and these people being underwater, this is interesting to me. Well they will find they will find a time when when they find a compassionate partnership after this judgment. And then we'll be left wondering had they done enough. One more card. Okay, this is the Knight of Wands, but they will never give up fighting for their cause. These people are lost. These people are lost and uh, they will never fully recover. Maybe they never were moral, decent people that we hope they would be. Well, that's what I got for you today. Hope you enjoyed the read. And if you tell me what you want to me to read on, I'll read on that. So give me a comment. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on a minute. Okay, so this deck by Los Carabillo 
is by renowned uh, uh, child uh, children's book uh, illustrator uh, Arthur Rackham. So this is called the Arthur Rackham Tarot, and these are amazing. Um, this uh, fella was uh, born in 1867, and he was an illustrator of such books as uh, the Brothers Grimm uh, tales. Um, Peter, who was it? Peter Pan in Kensington Gardens. And uh, so the cards themselves, they come in this typical uh, box. Okay, and it's got illustrations from uh, Rackham all around it, which is nice. The uh, illustration booklet is just a typical uh, booklet in, I think, three languages and just with a very brief uh, talk about uh, Rackham here, but with good um, suggestions as to how to divide the cards. But nothing to write home about. <clears throat> the cards themselves. They're just typical. There's nothing special about the back that I can see, and uh, they're easy to handle. And uh, But the thing about these cards is the work. So when you have an artist who has gone into such detail for these images, and these are pulled from his works over the um, ages, I guess, you know, I guess he was active uh, 100 years ago or so. And uh, so fairy tales for children. And so this sort of stuff just really lends itself perfectly to telling stories in the tarot. The one thing that's odd, like, so for instance, here's a nine of pentacles, and you won't see nine pentacles on here, so you really have to know what the divination is, and then interpret his drawings, which are just fantastical, uh, into that uh, divination. So I like to put the cards out like this so that you can get an idea of what the decks look like if you're not a person who buys a lot of cards, or I always have my eyes open for something different. Um, I love that uh, artists uh, come up with these cards, and... Um, and put so much attention into the original uh, works and then that gives us and then when someone wants to choose from their vast uh, repertoire to interpret the tarot that's even more intention laid on top of that so i hope you like them i'm crazy about them so these are arthur rackman's or just the rackman tarot by Les carabillo